Hi, my name is Matt Kloskowski and welcome to this video where we're gonna talk a little bit about landscape photography workflow inside of On One and, and specifically inside of On One uh, Photo Raw 2019, the latest version that just came out uh, in November. The idea behind this video, no, number one, it is a, it's a video, it's a bonus video leading up to a course that I'm creating that's gonna come out in a couple of weeks um, called The Essential Guide to Landscape Photo Editing Inside On One. And, this video, whether you buy the course or not, I think is an essential step in figuring out your landscape workflow. And I kind of, I'm, I'm doing it because I want people who get the course to just hit the ground running, right? I don't want, I don't want to spend too much time on some of the more boring parts of editing. I want people, I want to be able to jump in and start doing the fun stuff of editing, but we can't deny that that workflow is a part of this and that workflow has changed inside of 2019. So if you've launched the new version, you've been in the develop section, you may kind of have seen that some things aren't there that used to be there. Things like color adjustments and vignettes and black and white adjustments and certain kind of creative settings that we can do are now moved over into effects. So in this video, we're gonna talk about what's the deal with this workflow? Like why has it changed? Um, I think it's a good change, but why has it changed and how do you really make the most out of it? Okay, let's go ahead and dive in and take a look. Okay, so uh, I'm inside of On One 2019, and let's take a look at the what I mean by the layout of the of the workflow, the order of the workflow here, because I, I think some some things have changed, some things have changed big time in the way that we work inside of On One, and uh, kind of knowing those changes and knowing where where they're going to affect your workflow is important. So I've got a photo here. We're going to head over. I'm going to click on Edit, and uh, we'll jump into the Edit mode. So. One of the most important parts about about what's changed here, and let's let's forget about layers for now, okay? Because this is this is another huge area that has changed, and um, it's going to become a, an integral part of our our landscape workflow. But let's forget about layers for a second, and let's just talk about all the other stuff because that's really where that's really where we kind of develop a, an order of a workflow for things. So what you have now is develop effects portrait, which when it comes to landscape, we're not really going to talk too much about, and then local. Okay. It's different from what we used to have on the right hand side, where we had all these modules that we kind of jumped in and jumped out of. And, um, especially if you, you know, you went between one and another, if you went between layers, sometimes the things that you did in layers, well, you didn't get, you couldn't see all of the layers being applied back over here and develop when you applied things. So the way that this works now, is we start with develop and you might notice that there's there's not as many settings over here as there used to be okay we have tone and color we have details we have lens correction and transform and that is to me what i i think a very very good move on on one's part because what they've done is they've kind of separated the technical settings from everything else okay and i call these technical settings you know we can get creative with tone and color i'd probably go in here you know, pull back on my highlights uh, quite a bit on this one and then, you know, open up on midtones, maybe on the shadows a little bit more. We could come in here, add a little bit of, a little bit of structure to it, a little bit of blacks to kind of give it a little contrast. But honestly, guys, I, I would even stop there. Like I, the photo needs contrast, but I think some of the things that I'm going to do to this photo are going to be very, very creative and they will add contrast eventually as I, as, as time goes on here. So a lot of this is also having a little bit of familiarity with your workflow. You know, what types of things do you do and do things that you do to your photos usually later on add contrast. And if they do, I don't try to get too much done right here. You know, basic shadows and highlights, basic overall white balance. I might warm the photo a little bit. Saturation wise, I, I think we're pretty good. I want to do things to the colors, but I don't necessarily think everything needs more saturation. Um, from here, I'd go down to the other technical settings like details. You know, we could uh, we could go in here, add some sharpening to the photo. The, it's, the photo is pretty sharp. It's, it, I don't think it needs um, a whole lot of sharpening to it, but I can go in here and crank this up really until I get to the point where it starts to look crunchy and I'm never really getting to that point here. Uh, this doesn't have any noise reduction to speak of, so I won't really have to worry about that. Uh, lens correction. So it's automatically turned lens corrections on. If I go over here, let's fit this back to the screen here. Uh, it's automatically turned it on, so if I turn it off and then on, you can see it's detected a little bit of distortion there. 
Um, and then transform, which we don't need in this photo. We don't really have any lines or anything that are, that are off that we have to transform in it. But these are our technical settings, okay? Uh, overall shadow and toning and details and all that stuff are technical. Now, what we do is we move into effects to do the creative stuff. And where you're going to see one of the biggest changes is that you don't see color adjustments over here. You don't see a vignette over here. You don't see black and white adjustments over here. Uh, you don't split toning, anything like that. You don't see any of that over here. I think it's a good move because now all of that exists over in effects. All right. It, a lot of it did exist in effects before and therein, I thought lied a lot of the confusion, right? I had a vignette in develop and I had a vignette in effects. What was, what was I supposed to do? You know, where was I supposed to add a vignette? So for me, this is a great separation because now I would come over here. I'd, I'd say the first thing I want to do is go and work on the color. So I'd go to the color adjustment, which is a new filter, but it's actually just kind of moved from where it used to be over here in develop. So I go over, I click on fall. That's going to give me a good start. And then I can go through all of the different uh, colors through here. I think reds, we can probably get a few more reds in here. Oranges, I think we can move a little bit too. All right. Yellows, I think we'll get a lot of bang for our buck just by moving around the yellows. Maybe a little bit more saturation in those and even some brightness. And then greens, I think we'll get a decent amount too. Kind of turn those a little bit more toward yellow just for the fall colors. I think we're pretty good on that end there. I think I might just check out my oranges a little bit more. All right. So if I want to see the before and after of just that adjustment, I can hit that little toggle switch here and I can see the before and after. And it's just giving me a little bit of color pop in everything. If I ever want to see the full before and after, just hit the backslash key. That'll show you your full before. Basically, the entire preview is off and then on. And you'll see down here, there's a little preview button. If you forget the backslash key, you can just click on that button down there. So that's our color adjustment. What do I do next? Well, I'd probably go in here. Um, I like to add a glow to finish some photos off. In this photo, I think I also want a little bit of warmth. And I know that I can get both with the sunshine filter. All right. So I would go over here to sunshine and go in here, maybe boost up the warmth a little bit, not too much on the saturation. I think we're pretty good saturated and then a lot of glow just to give it that soft type of a feeling. Okay. As you may or may not know, you can mask away any part of a filter. So I would go click on the mask on that sunshine filter and uh, come over here. I got my masking tool. I've got my mode set to paint out and I would just go over here and paint out from the sky because it was making the sky too bright. I, don't, I didn't need the, I didn't need any glow in the sky. It's just this foreground area that I want the glow. So you can see it's just going to affect that area there. And then finally, I would probably go in here, throw a vignette on top of it because we can, <laughs> and you know that I love to, uh, that's of course going to be too dark. So we'll pull it back, increase the size a bit. I would also drop the anchor point of this vignette. Just kind of click down in the bottom left corner of it. Probably go in here and drop the anchor point down a bit, down into here, just so it darkens everything else. So I think that did a nice job, although we could probably play with the brightness a little bit. And so think back to what we just did. Well, I've got my develop changes all over here. I've got my effects and my stylization all over here. And then of course we're going to skip portrait, but local adjustments. Well, these can be things that you want to do to just part of the photo. So for me, there's, there's two things I'm thinking on this photo. I want to just boost a couple of areas in the foreground. So I would take my brush tool, increase the exposure. Notice my mode is set to paint in. So I'll be painting this in and I would just go through here and just pop a little bit on some of those foreground areas, not the whole thing. Otherwise, why did I even add the vignette, right? You know, if you're just going to go brighten the whole thing, um, why even bother? So just going to pop a little bit of light. Whenever I do that, I usually follow it up with a little bit of structure or contrast just to keep it from looking too milky and kind of blah. Um, and then I would add another adjustment, take it to negative exposure, use a real low opacity brush on this one too. And I probably just swipe 
couple of times right along that horizon line. That's the only place to me that it kind of stayed kind of stayed fairly bright in the photo and I wanted to tone that down a little bit. So I would just brush over there. So now think about the separation that we have here and you don't really get this in many other places. Um, I've got all my local adjustments separated over here and I can very easily reset those just with that little, uh, there's a little reset button right over here. Then I've got all of my effects over here and then I've got all of my develop settings over here. And what's really nice about this is because as, as time goes on, things may change. You may, you, your taste may change and you may decide to do something different to this photo. There may get a new filter that gets added and you want to go try it out and do something else with it. As time goes on and you change your output changes, maybe you find that when you put this photo online, it looks great, but when you print it, it doesn't. Well, now I know exactly where to go, right? I know I can go straight to develop, go to tone and color and make it a, the overall, make the whole thing a little bit brighter. Okay. Um, if I decide if, you know, again, maybe I, I put it online and it looks a little too yellow because I've added a lot of effects to this, which sometimes can, you know, you get caught up in it here. Well, I know right where to go. I know right where to go to my effects and I can go through here and adjust them. Um, of course you can adjust the opacity of everything inside as well, but same thing goes for local. And then here's the really cool part. If you realize, you know what, I'm just not digging this. You know, I know I developed the photo this way, but I want to go in a whole different direction with it. And maybe I want to go black and white with it. Well, I can go to my effects. I don't have to hit reset off. I hit reset all, it resets everything. But if I just hit reset, now I've removed the stylization and I can go a whole different route with it. But my overall toning remains the same. It didn't touch one slider over here. All those sliders stayed the same. So I have true separation of all of my style and all of my basic, you know, my basic uh, technical type of adjustments. They're truly separated so that I can jump in here and I can decide, hey, I'm gonna go black and white with this one. Uh, we can go through all the different filters here and take a look at what they would, uh, which way we could go. I kind of always like the Chrome one is pretty cool, but it's not necessarily about a black and white tutorial. It's more just now I can go a whole different direction. If I don't like that, I can cancel it go back here, add another filter, maybe go into the LUTs filter. And there's probably a ton, literally a ton of different types of filters that we could go um, and choose inside of here that are going to give us some pretty cool looks throughout the photo. Again, if I wanted to go more kind of an Instagram filter type of look, I could, I could use this one. And if a week I don't like it, guess what? I click reset and all of my develop settings are still the same. Okay. Same thing. You can go to local, you can get rid of all those and reset everything there. And then if I ever want to reset the develop, I can do that. I can reset develop, but it won't touch my effects. And finally, if I hit reset all, now I'm resetting this photo back to its original state. No adjustments applied anywhere inside of here. Okay. So there's a big workflow shift that's happening. Okay. And I think it's a good workflow shift in that it's really helping us kind of separate and target our adjustments so that number one makes it easy to manage. We always know where everything is going to be. I don't have to go searching around. Where did I add a vignette for this one? I always know exactly where it's going to be. Number two, it just gives us a good workflow to just kind of follow along and, uh, and be able to jump in here and change anything really fast.